is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network to fulfill all of your podcasting needs. I know that it's been a week and I've been missing and it's okay because I told you I'd be back in one week. So, you know, if you were a little, let's say, distraught or confused or maybe slightly upset Uh, Please hold back your emotional outburst because I have returned now There's there was some there was a couple things I was going to talk about today But then I found something that kind of blew my mind because here's the thing Here's this what I this is this is how we were going to open this show I'm going to give you guys give you guys a little little tidbit kind of a little bit mm, Behind the curtain if you will this isn't really behind the curtain I'm just going to tell what my thought process was my thought process was this I thought it was funny that people were calling the police on raccoons. People were calling the police on raccoons because they said they were acting funny. Now I was going to go into this big thing about that, which I'll talk about later. I thought it was interesting that people are calling and snitching on animals. It's just weird. It's interesting. But, but I will not bury the lead because I found out something that I was that um um that kind of surprised me. And usually when you find out about stuff in the news. Like stuff doesn't really surprise me that often. Like, for example, all the challenges that the kids have, they have these random challenges. You remember they had the, there was the ice bucket challenge. This was, that was like a hundred years ago. There was a statue challenge, right? Just min, like this was last year. The last one I talked to you guys about was the Tide Pod challenge, which I can't necessarily knock kids for because I'm not going to front. Tide Pods do look good. Like Tide Pods, they look like candy. I won't even front. They do. You shouldn't eat them. But the reason people began to eat them was because somebody said, hey, these look really good. They look like candy. Someone might end up eating one of these. And then people started eating them on tape and put them on video, which is actually which is actually here's here's my problem with the Tide Pods that make the Tide Pods look really, really scrumptious. They do like they're blue and they're orange and they they got swirls in them. They actually look pretty good. I won't, they look pretty good. I think if they want people to not eat Tide Pods, just don't make them look so appealing. You, you want to know why nobody likes to eat black licorice? Because it doesn't even look good. It, it, just, it doesn't, it, it doesn't look good at all. First of all, licorice looks silly anyway. It just looks with the lines and the way it's turned all around. And then it's like black licorice. And if you compare that to the red licorice, why would I want to eat that? That's why no one likes it because the way it looks. Have you ever gotten a, have you ever ordered a plate of food and the display wasn't on point? It just was like, I don't even like the way this looks. Like there's a couple of restaurants, I won't say any names, but they'll bring you a plate and it'll just be like, what is this? What, what is it? What is this? Did you, did you, is this from a can? Is this, is this from some type of bucket? What, what is this? This is disgusting. You don't want to eat it because the way it looks. So if you don't want people to eat Tide Pods, just don't make them look so tasty. I digress. You guys thought it couldn't get any worse than the Tide Pod Challenge, but it did get worse than the Tide Pod Challenge. Do you know what's happening now? Guess. I'll give you a second to guess. All right. They're having what is called the Condom Snorting Challenge. And kids, yeah, I said that right. My producer just nodded his head at me. No, no, this is a real thing. I'm not kidding. This is a real thing. Kids are putting kids are putting condoms in their nose. They put the condom in their nose and they inhale it until the condom goes through that hole in your nose when it comes out of your mouth. You ever like have you ever like been drinking some water and then something weird happens and the water like it'll come out of your nose or like it, it just you know, like for those okay, for those of you that don't know, your nose, your nostrils are like connected to your mouth. Just so you mind blown 
I'm not saying that I'm Tyson Neil Degrassi. I'm not Bill and I the science guy. I didn't mean to just blow your mind. But if you didn't know that, just know that, you know, that's why your mouth and smells and tastes are all connected because your nose, there's a hole back there. And for those of you that didn't know that, you probably shouldn't be storing condoms. And even if you do know that, you really shouldn't be storing condoms. There was something going on saying that when people do this, they can possibly suffocate. Why, you may ask? Because they're putting latex plastic inside of their mouth. It's going down their windpipe to come into their into their mouth. So it's like, um, it's I guess bubbles got boring, maybe. Maybe no one wants to blow bubbles anymore because that's what you get. This is what ends up happening. You put the condom in your nose, you snort it, and the condom, the air basically comes through like your mouth and then you win. That's basically what's supposed to happen. The problem is if it gets stuck and someone tries to give you the Heimlich, you can die. Now, before we get all judgy, before we get all judgy and start saying, why are people doing this? This challenge is, this challenge is ridiculous. I feel like a lot of these challenges come from certain things. A lot of these challenges come from ideas They come from someone doing something by accident They come from someone not necessarily thinking something through all the way. I have a theory about where this challenge came from. I have a theory. I have a theory. This is my theory. My theory is that someone had a condom. They had it. They just had it in their hand. They weren't supposed to have the condom or they were somewhere where someone was going to find out they had a condom that would just open this raw condom, just ready to be ready to be used in a way that it was made to be used. And then this person needed to hide the condom and they got the idea that they put the condom in their nose. Yes. Yes. They were like, you know what? I know where to hide this at. I'm going to put this in my nose. I'm going to put this in my nose. And then they put it in their nose. And then they started coughing. Then it ended up in their mouth. And then where they were at, when their friends were like, what'd you just do, bro? I was like, oh, I had a condom. I had to hide it in my nose. Now it's in my mouth. Oh, man, that's cool. You guys think it's cool? Yeah, we should do that too. Next thing you know, we got a worldwide frenzy on our hands of people snorting condoms. And that's how I think it happened. I don't necessarily believe that this was something where somebody actually meant for this to be a challenge. I think it happened by accident and then dares, truth, truths turned into dares. And now people have been choking on these condoms that they've been snorting. This is kind of, this is one of those things. This is like one of those challenges where, where, where it's probably not going to go away. It's probably not. It's probably not going to go away. I, I I don't think this is going to go anywhere. You want to know? Oh, oh, you want to know why? The reason why this isn't really going to go anywhere is because I feel like it. it's really challenging to do this. And the more challenging it is to do, I believe the more people are going to do it. Just because it's one of those things where the effort is the effort is going to be there. People are going to be taping themselves, getting the effort in. A lot of effort, right, to do this, and they're gonna put it on video and it's gonna upload it. Versus like eating the Tide Pods, like people would people would eat the Tide Pod, they bite it, it leak everywhere. Ha ha! Tide Pod challenge, then it goes away. But for this thing, for this thing, it takes a while for you to be able to do this. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of things you got to do with your nose and so on and so forth to get it to. to I haven't done it, so don't roll your eyes at me like that. I haven't done. I'm just saying it doesn't look like something that's very easy to do. Listen, I hear you judging me. Anyway, with that, don't put condoms in your nose. I'm going to take a quick commercial break. When I get back, I'm going to tell you something else interesting that happened to me today. Well, not that that happened to me today. Anyway, something else interesting that I read, not that it happened to me, because that sounds like I did that thing, but I didn't do that thing. Anyway, I'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Yeah. 
Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on and by the GSMC Podcast Network to fulfill all of your podcasting needs. Now, I, th- there's just there's one more thing about this condom snorting story that I just have to get that I have to get out to you guys. Th- this paragraph, the paragraph made me laugh a little bit. Well, it didn't really make me laugh. It just kind of made me shake my head. It said, parents are encouraged to sit down and have serious conversation with kids about serious consequences when it concerns risky trends like the condom challenge. You know, I, it must be really hard to be a parent. It has to be really hard because you already have to have a conversation with your kids about condoms. That's the thing, right? Like you have to sit down and say, Hey, you know what? You have to protect yourself from the stuff that's going on out here in the streets. There's a lot of stuff going on in the streets. There's a lot of stuff. There's, there's, there's all these willy nilly diseases and willy nilly infections and willy nilly people. There's people running around, like actually trying to give people like STIs and STDs. It's a dangerous world. You have to have that conversation with kids, especially about kids, things like that. You have to talk, you have to talk to your kids about kids, all that type of stuff. Now you sit down and tell your kids about how to use a condom and the dangers of like not using a condom. And then you find out that they have them. You're like, oh, that's cool. Like they're listening to me, but turns out your kids are snorting the condoms. So how's that talk go? Like, how does that talk go exactly? Like, hey, listen, Jacob, we know that you've been buying condoms. Well, what, mom, you said I should get, yeah, wait, 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 I'm happy that you're buying condoms and that you're around the condoms. I'm glad that you're around them. However, there's a possibility that you're not using them right. Well, mom, I bought the stupid condoms. I bought them. And now you're on my back because I'm not doing what you want me to do. No, 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 no. I don't need you to do certain stuff with them. I just need you to not put them in your nose. Don't put the columns in your nose because you know what's going to happen. That's going to be an interesting story because what's going to happen with Jacob is that one day he's going to have a condom and he's going to put it in his nose to this challenge. And then when it comes time to use the condom, he won't have it. Now Jacob's got a baby. Now Jacob's 15 and a half with a baby. Why? Because the condom challenge, right? This is a problem. So I don't know. Shout out, shout out to the parents out there. Cause that that's, that's hard. That, that is hard. What I would say is this, because if the condom gets stuck in your nose, there's a possibility. Well, if it gets stuck in that pathway, there's a possibility that it might need to be surgically removed. So if the condom, if you get a condom stuck in your nose or in your mouth and you can live, like if you can live through it and you're my kid, you just got to stay like that. You just, you just got to stay like that for like a week. And if your voice sounds funny, like, if that's how you got to sound, that's just what you have to do. This, you did this to yourself. You did this to yourself. So you got to go to school like that now. You gotta go to school like that. You gotta go to school like that or we'll pay for the surgery. And whatever the surgery costs, we're gonna take it out of the money that whatever your college was gonna cost. Or if you weren't gonna go to college, we're gonna take it out of the money we're gonna buy a car for you for you with. Either way, you gotta pay the price. So hopefully that PSA worked for you guys. The end. On a lighter note, this isn't really a lighter note. This is this is um this is actually this is this is actually near shady. This is near shady. There were complaints of there were complaints or concerns of raccoons acting weird. And they when they when I say they were acting weird, it turns out that they weren't they weren't acting like they were scared of humans. So there's a neighborhood where there's a lot of raccoons and then people were concerned because the raccoons weren't acting like they were afraid of them. Apparently the raccoons um they don't have rabies, but they had some other type of of infection that was making them wander about like they were drunk and just like falling over with their mouths open and things like that. But uh, this was in Ohio. And the way I found out about this is that people were calling the police on the raccoons because they said, Hey, these raccoons aren't acting like they're scared of us anymore. Now I don't even, I don't know where you live at. I'm not sure. Well, it says Ohio, but I don't know what kind of raccoons they have in Ohio. But when I lived in the Bay area and there were raccoons that would like come into our backyard, they didn't give any, any, they didn't give any about who or what was near them. 
I had a couple raccoons fight my cat once. It was crazy because they run around in packs like they're gang members. And I don't know. I'm not sure what kind. Of, so I'm what I'm saying is that the raccoons that I grew up with that were in my neighborhood, they're the type of raccoons where you wouldn't want to call the police on them. That if you call the police on the raccoons in my neighborhood, that was just going to be the last phone call that you were ever going to make. But that that's where we're at with that. That's if that that phone call, if you call the police on these raccoons near where I lived at, that would have been the last phone call that you were going to make. And they would have made sure that these raccoons apparently are okay with just willy nilly people snitching. Apparently, the animals were spotted exhibiting bizarre behavior around the city of Youngstown since January last week. A wildlife photographer managed to catch a few examples of the baffling phenomena. Now, I don't even pay that much attention. To, I, and also, th- this is a weird thing, though. I mean, I, I, if I were, if we're being honest, if I'm being completely transparent and not being like as judgy as I want to be for this story, they did say that they did say that the raccoons were were out during the daytime. Like now, now that that's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like that's okay. You know, like if I saw, if I saw four or five raccoons just in my front lawn right now, you know, I'd probably snitch too. I'd probably snitch too. I'm not necessarily going to call the police though. I might make a Facebook post about it or something or tell us a couple of my friends, but I make sure I would make sure that I would bring my cat in the house because just where I grew up at, you can't snitch on raccoons. I, I, I don't even, I'm not even sure how you even distinguish between raccoons being weird or not being weird. They walk around on their hind legs on two legs and their hands are feet and their feet are hands. So how exactly do you dictate whether or not they're, ex- they're exhibiting weird behavior? I don't, I want to know. I want to know more about it. I like to know more about it, but Actually, you know what? I know I know enough about it. I know that when I read the story, they said these Youngstown raccoons are terrorizing people. Terrorizing them? They're just being out in the daytime. So it sounds like either these people aren't used to having raccoons around or this is part of just the zombie apocalypse is going to start a little bit earlier. Let me tell you guys about this zombie apocalypse. Everyone is really concerned about there being zombies, but that's not what's going to happen. There's not. That's not what's going to happen at all. It won't be zombies. It's not going to be that. It won't. It won't be the zombies. What's going to happen is going to be robots and animals. That's what's going to happen. Robots and animals are going to lead us to the apocalypse in the dystopian movies that we keep seeing. I'm telling you guys, because for these raccoons have like some type of strange infection where it's not rabies, but it's something else. And they had to examine a bunch of raccoon carcasses to find out exactly what's going on with them. And no one really knows. And plus we got these, these robots that can do backflips. It's going to be, it's going to be, animals and robots that take us out that's what it's going to be it will not be zombies you want to know why i'll tell you why regardless of what walking dead tells you i just need you to know this there's no way there's going to be that many there's no way there's going to be that many just zombies and people are going to be beefing there's no way it's just not going to happen and i'm not going to go too far into that right now because i will get into that on the sci-fi show, the weird, the GSMC sci-fi show, I'll talk about that, and I will also talk about the Walking Dead episode. But I digress. All I'm saying is that you guys should be careful because they're trying to trick us with these with this zombie apocalypse theory. But that's not it. It's gonna be it's gonna be animals. It will be animals. You heard you heard it here first. The revolution will be will be televised, and it will be robots and raccoons. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know that sounds crazy. I know it does, and my producer just nodded his head at me. But no, for I'm, you don't believe me. You think this is a game, huh? Okay, you'll see. You'll see. Now, when I'm on my rooftop, when I'm on my rooftop, that's really high, that's robot free. That cannot be attacked by robots, and you're in in raccoon free, and you're at the bottom saying, "Ryan, Ryan, help! You were right. You were right. You were right." Then I'm gonna say, yeah, I was right, and then that's just that's gonna be it. So I'm not I'm not being judgy. I'm just letting you guys know that if you're slip if you're sleeping on that, then mm 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 get your home right, raccoon proof your home. This is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take a brief commercial break, and then when I get back, um, I'm gonna tell you guys about how about what not to do at your ex girlfriend's house. Be right back. 
This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. As promised, I'm going to tell you what not to do at your ex-girlfriend's house. Okay? All right. A Kansas man. Yes, a Kansas man. Not someone that goes to Kansas University, but a man from Kansas. He was taken to the hospital after falling through his ex-girlfriend's ceiling. Apparently, he broke into her house and was hiding in the attic. When he was hiding in the attic, the ceiling collapsed and he fell out of the attic, out of the attic onto the floor. He hurt himself really bad. He was taken to the hospital. When he was at the hospital, he escaped from the hospital and he broke into someone else's house and stole some clothes. When the lady got home, when the woman got home, she noticed that there was a hospital gown on her bed. And her clothes had been messed with the police received an alert saying this man has left the hospital. We need to find him. They later found him and arrested him while he was wearing a woman's T-shirt. It didn't say, but I'm assuming that this woman's T-shirt belongs to the woman whose hospital gown, the woman whose house that he broke into after he left the hospital. I want to I want to know, like, if somebody. I, I, I want to know this. And, wait, 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 and, 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 and I'm going to make a contrast here. And uh, in New York, they recently made a Facebook post about how they're going to place winter under arrest because it's too cold, which I think is funny. Ha ha. Winter's under arrest is too cold. I have a question. If this man broke into his ex-girlfriend's house and was just in the ceil- in the attic and then fell through the ceiling, just fell through. And then he was under arrest. How come he wasn't under the type of arrest that would require him to to stay at the hospital? Like, I think certain stuff happens to you where you do something stupid and you get hurt. Like, hmm, hmm, what's something stupid you could do and then get hurt? All right, let's say you were climbing a pole and you were climbing a pole and then you fell off the pole and they you got charged with like I don't know city vandalism or something like that and you got hurt and you're at the hospital. I don't think they would. I don't think they would handcuff you to the gurney because they would just be sending you a check. I mean a bill like hey you got to pay this bill you have to pay this bill because this you have to pay this bill we don't like it that's all we think would happen like they wouldn't handcuff you but for this guy to break into one woman's house and fall through the ceiling and then go to the hospital and then be and then leave the hospital break into another woman's house and steal her clothes I feel like this was a great this was a crisis averted it really was a crisis averted because he sounds like a crazy person and I don't want to be insensitive by just calling people crazy because it's rude. You shouldn't necessarily call people crazy. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't just say, hey, you're crazy. Shouldn't do that. However, I do think that his thoughts and his thought process and things that he does, they should be further examined. And with that further examining is going to require him to be handcuffed to a gurney after the first time he breaks into a woman's house. I'm just saying. If you're at home, you're sitting on your couch and somebody falls through the ceiling, someone you've decided to end a romantic relationship with, they just fall through the ceiling, just fall. I think it's important. It's very important to tell the police, hey, you guys know what? I don't think you should let this person leave the hospital before taking them to jail because it just seems kind of raggedy, seems kind of raggedy, negligent disrespectful almost it it's just not good behavior meanwhile in new york they placed winter under arrest they said hey winter it's too cold 
you out here tripping. This isn't good. You're under arrest. Winter places under arrest, which is completely respectable. But for some reason in Kansas, you can just break into women's houses all willy nilly and you will never get handcuffed to a gurney. I would like to know what his plan was. I don't want to I don't want to be judgy and be disrespectful to this individual. Maybe he was trying to surprise her. Maybe he was trying to get his girlfriend back. He was up there with some roses. Maybe that part's left out of the story. Maybe he was upstairs with roses and chocolates and then the roof just fell in. And he's like, oh, man. Ruined my surprise. Now, that's called the benefit of the doubt, which I'm not willing to give him. I really think that he was up there just hiding in the attic and then was trying to and then was trying to catch her. With, with the new guy Like hey I knew it I knew you were seeing somebody else I knew it I knew it My mama told me I couldn't trust you Maybe one of those situations Me personally I don't I don't believe that he was up there With roses and chocolates I believe That He was up there Trying to plot A global domination Of this woman's home I mean The, the moral of this story would be that if somebody tells you that they don't want to be with you, you shouldn't break into their house. Not just no means no, but go means go. Wait, wait, go means no. Yeah, go means if if she says go, and you have a and you have a, a inkling, you have a small inkling in your mind that says, hey, you know what you should do? You should break into her house, hide in her attic. That'll show her how much you love her. No, no, no. That go earlier, that go earlier, that go meant no. You don't do that. You don't break in to her house. Not a good idea. So I I I really hope that this amount of game that I gave you from this story, I hope that anybody that was about to go break into their ex-girlfriend's house and hide in the attic, I hope this helped you. I hope this helped you, and I hope that you turn your car around right now. Stop over at Wiener, at Wiener Snitchel. Get yourself a really cheap chili cheese dog or whatnot. Eat that. It'd make you feel good. It really will. I don't even eat Wiener Schnitzel, but when I used to back in the day, day, it would make me feel pretty good. Go do that. Change your mind and go back home. But whatever you do, don't break into our house. It's not a good idea. The ceiling's in the cave in. You're going to go to jail. Well, no, you won't go to jail. You go to the hospital. This has been the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway. Thanks again for your time. Drive safe. Wait, wait, not drive safe. Watch for potholes, live long and prosper. And don't don't do the condom challenge unless you're doing it for the right reason. <laughs> Talk to you guys soon.